Welcome to a little mini-series that I like to call Character Quest. This is where I take a look at some complex and interesting characters that don't really get talked about. That, or people just don't understand their complexity. One of my favorite books of all time when I was a kid was Roald Dahl's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. We all know the story, don't we? Well, for all, like, three of you who don't, let me fill you in. A young boy by the name of Charlie Bucket has no luck at all. His family's broke, his dad just lost his job, and they're all on the brink of starvation. However, one of his favorite candy makers, Willy Wonka, is letting people into his factory for the first time ever. He's very reclusive and has a ton of secrets, so this is pretty much like getting into Area 51 for candy, and without the memes and the raids. With a stroke of luck, he finds the last ticket that lets him go into the factory, and all the other kids meet horrible, horrible demises while Charlie gets what he always wanted. The end. Given that this book is a cult classic, it's only natural that the characters would be talked about at nauseum. Everybody knows all about Charlie Bucket, Grandpa Joe, Augustus Gloop, Veruca Salt, and you'd better believe that Willy Wonka gets his time in the spotlight. But there's a few characters in this book that nobody ever really talks about. Or at least, they don't talk about in depth. Roald Dahl put a lot of layers to the important characters in this story, and some of them just never get any recognition. But for me, the most baffling one in this category would be the fourth golden ticket winner, Mike TV. A young boy who's been essentially raised by television. His parents just let him watch countless hours of this stuff, and don't ever bother disciplining him or anything that a parent should do. The television is the center of his world. Because of this, it leads to a lot of very bad traits that Mike has. Even though all the other ticket winners are really horrible people, Mike is easily the worst. How so? Let me explain it to you. And also, allow me to go into some more depth about some of his other traits. For this, I'll be talking about the book version of Mike TV and the 2005 version of Mike TV. I'm not even going to touch the 1970s version. That got the character way, way wrong, but that's a story for another day. This is the story of Mike TV, the boy with no childhood. Absolutely none of what Mike TV does reminds me of anything that a kid his age should be doing. He's always angry, he's always bad-mouthing people, he's snapping, he's moody, he shows disrespect to authority figures, he isolates himself. It seems like he's pretty much just skipped the whole childhood phase and gone right to angsty, depressed teenager who needs to constantly prove that he's better and smarter than everyone else. Aside from his addiction to television, what is the thing that Mike TV is mostly known for? That's right, constantly butting into conversations, trying to correct people's inaccuracies or inconsistencies, not to further the facts or make sure that everything is consistent, no, just to prove that he's smarter and therefore better than everyone else. Of course, Mr. Wonka gives him a hard time for it, but no one else seems to. Nevertheless, he just keeps on going. Why not? He doesn't know any better. He's got absolutely no social skills. The only thing he knows about social interaction is what he sees on TV. As you would expect, that doesn't help. At all. Everything is always about what he wants and what he believes. There can be no other alternative. Like when he's always correcting Willy Wonka. As he is the owner and tour guide, Willy Wonka always is the center of attention. That is, when the beautiful landscape of the factory is not overshadowing him. Mike doesn't like that. He has to find something wrong with it so that it can come back to him. He wants to be the focus. He wants to be admired for his intellect. His intellect, which, admittedly, isn't always correct. You can't always believe what you see on TV, folks. Especially not in the world created by World Doll. This is exemplified further in the 2005 movie, too. When he sees the television machine, he says that it could be a teleporter and something that could really benefit the world, but Willy Wonka is just an idiot who's misusing it. So he's gonna prove to Willy Wonka that he's smarter by using his machine for better purposes. Although this isn't specifically in the book, it definitely lines up with his character. He's always prideful, he's always looking down on others, and he always thinks he's just the smartest person on this earth. Mike TV won't let anybody or anything prove him wrong either. It's his way or no way at all. Because of this, the only emotions he's ever really seen feeling are arrogant smugness or outright anger. He doesn't really have any in-between, and he's just stuck at that. He has no choice. Television's kind of robbed him of all of his other emotions. 
Does he care? Not in the slightest. Do his parents care? I don't think so. We'll touch on that later. Now, if Mike TV is constantly rattling off all these intellectual tidbits, you'd think maybe he's watching some kind of intellectual show or educational program, right? <laughs> Wrong! Mike TV is a violent boy. From the first time we see him in his Golden Ticket interview, he yells and screams at all the people to get away from him and threatening them too. Nothing is to disturb him, nothing at all. He wants to watch TV and he doesn't want anybody to get in his way. You don't want to mess with him either. He's covered with toy guns. Yes, they're toy guns, but the intent is still there. Just by even looking at him, you can tell that he loves nothing more than senseless violence. And it doesn't stop there. The way he talks about his shows is oddly disturbing. Here, let me read it to you. Didn't I tell you not to interrupt? This show is an absolute whiz-banger. It's terrific. I watch it every day. I watch all of them every day, even the rotten ones where there's no shooting. I like the gangsters best. They're terrific, those gangsters. Especially when they start pumping each other full of lead, or flashing the old stilettos, or giving each other the one, two, three with their knuckle dusters. Gosh, what I wouldn't give to be doing that myself. It's the life, I tell you. It's terrific. Is it just me, or is that really unsettling to hear coming out of a nine-year-old's mouth? Even when he's shrunken down after being sent by television, he's attacking his parents' hands and biting them just so he can get free. Yes, yes, kids are known for temper tantrums, sometimes even violent tantrums. But they don't do this. Not usually, at least. They only really do this when there's something wrong with them. The exposure to television has even desensitized him. It's constantly seen throughout the book and the movie that he is always the least impressed by what he sees. Of course, how could he not be? Television is a place where anything can happen. The most out there ideas or the most ridiculous scenarios or the most vibrant worlds. They can come to life on television, even back then. As we've discussed earlier, Mike doesn't really have a full grasp of the difference between TV and real life. Therefore, he's not really taken aback by much of what he sees. Granted, it would definitely be somewhat impressive, but he's always the least vocal about it. And as we can see in the movies, he usually looks at it with slight wide-eyed curiosity at best, and indifference at worst. And that makes sense given his emotions. A lot of people that are desensitized to a lot of things in the world have trouble displaying emotions. It all makes sense. And given his violent nature and horrible emotional state, it's no wonder that his Oompa Loompa song is by far the harshest. It goes without saying that the Oompa Loompa songs are meant to taunt the kids and make fun of them, but if you read the lyrics of Mike's very carefully, they're the harshest out of all of them. It rots the senses in the head, it kills imagination dead, it clogs and clutters up the mind, it makes a child so dull and blind he can no longer understand a fantasy of fairyland. His brain becomes as soft as cheese, his powers of thinking rust and freeze, he cannot think he only sees. Ouch. And there's two reasons for that. One is the aforementioned fact that he is a horrible, horrible child. And then the second, Roald Dahl hated television. He wrote Mike TV as a way to vent his frustrations of what he feared the new advent of television would do. Remember, when it first came out, there was a bit of hysteria going around that it would just rot people's heads. And this is what Roald Dahl felt too. He wrote Mike TV as a way to express everything he feared. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Mike TV went from a cartoonish exaggeration to a cautionary tale. Look around you. With technology being so easy to access, more and more children are becoming like Mike TV. They're skipping that childlike wonder and amusement phase and going right to angsty teen. They're half the reason those entitled people subreddits are allowed to exist. And a lot of it stems from parents like the TVs. They don't really know how to raise their son or don't really care about how their son is raised, so they just put him in front of the TV and let him watch whatever he wants. That has a lot of damage on people. Children are very impressionable, and they tend to pick up things from what they see and are exposed to. Too much of that will end up molding their personality, and by the time they get older, it could very well be too late. And it's already too late for Mike TV, as we can see here. I'm not talking about what happens in Charlie and the Grand Reunion either. I'm just talking about from what we can see here. It's already too late. Augustus may be able to change, Veruca may be able to change, 
Violet may be able to change, but Mike TV's situation is a bit set in stone. Poor parenting can ruin a child's life. And there's no further proof of that than Mike TV, a boy who had no choice but to grow up way too quickly. So folks, that is Mike TV. What did you think about the video? Who's your favorite golden ticket winner? Comment below and let me know because hey, as always, I'm excited to hear what you guys have to say. We've got two more for Character Quest, so stay tight folks. These last two are gonna be doozies. Alright folks, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week.